Mrs. Maxwell House the best coffee in the whole world? Well, your father says so, and your father knows best. Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons, brought to you by Maxwell House, the coffee that's bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee at any price. Maxwell House, always good to the last drop. From quiet homes and first beginning out to the undiscovered ends, there's nothing worth the wear of winning but laughter and the love of friends. No one, we're sure, can dispute the wisdom of Hilary Bellock's beautiful verse. Least of all the Andersons, who live in a white frame house on Maple Street in the fair city of Springfield. They have precisely the same views as the esteemed Mr. Bellock, but they express them in a slightly different manner, like this. Isn't it wonderful, Mother? Isn't it the most wonderful thing you've ever heard? Yes, dear, it's wonderful. If only I could still hear the wind in the trees, the larks in the sunshine, the young lambs crying through the healthy frost. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, dear, it's beautiful. And you ought to see the things Billy's doing with the stage. He's going to have real horses and everything. That's very nice, dear. I'm sure everyone will be happy to see real horses. Mommy! Oh, dear. Mommy! We're in the den, Kathy. Mother, why is it every time I try to tell Mommy, you something... Mommy, please, you hear what happened. I'm the president. That's fine, dear, but I've told you so many times... Kathy, I was speaking to Mother. But I'm the president. Isn't it wonderful? Yes, dear, and I'm sure you'll be the finest president the little vultures have ever had. <laughs> it isn't the little vultures. I don't like them anymore. I started my own club. Mother, if you don't do something about that child... I'm not a child. Kathy, please. I'm the president of The Secret, too, and she's just jealous. Jealous? Huh. Betty. Well, you aren't the president of anything. I'm going to be Joan of Arc. Well... She wasn't the president of anything either. <laughs> Kathy, if you don't listen to me... Mom, hey, Mom. Oh, no. Mom, I made it. Yeah. <laughs> Mother, I haven't told you even half the thing. And Patty Davis is the vice president. And as soon as we get somebody else to join... Mom, the coach just told me. I'm the manager. She's going to be the treasurer. Kathy. You haven't even heard about the armor. I wasn't supposed to be the manager Betty. for two whole years. And we're going to have a pass. We're in everything. But I want to tell Mother about the armor. But Ralph Spence is moving to Plainville, that isn't and the coach fair. said. That... I was telling Mommy about Kathy, my Kathy, now you wait a minute, Kathy. Kathy. Right. Mother and I were having a perfectly Bibby. wonderful well, time. Why you Bibby. 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 Just stop it! Did you say something, Mom? Yes. <laughs> I've told you repeatedly, all three of you, that I will not have you acting like little ruffians. Who is acting like a ruffian? You and Kathy come racing into the house, slamming doors. But I had to tell you about the club. It's a good thing your father isn't here. That's all I can say. Mom, you don't seem to understand. I'm going to be the manager of the football team. That's still no reason for you to slam the door, or Kathy either. I didn't slam Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> you know very well what I mean. Holy cow. Now, may I please finish about Joan of Arc? I suppose so. Why can she tell you about Joan of Arc if we can... Margaret! Margaret! It can't be. It just We're in isn't here, possible. Daddy! Honey, when did you hear what happened? Dad, I'm going to be the manager. Jumping creepers. Daddy slammed the door and you didn't tell him. Never mind, Kathleen. Margaret, I... Oh, you're all here. Well, that's fine. Wait until you hear what I've got to tell you. Jim, I just finished giving the children a lecture about coming into the house. Honey, how would you like to go to New York? Father! Jim, I wish you'd let me... New York? That's what I said, New York. What do you say? Well, I, I don't know what to say. How can we with the children? The children, too, the whole bunch of us. Daddy! Hey, I can see the Yankees. Father, when are we going? When will we leave? Just a minute now, not so fast. How does it sound, honey? It sounds wonderful, but how long will we be gone? Margaret, you don't understand. I mean, move to New York for good. For good? Holy cow. Jim, you're joking. You mean, 
And never come back here again? I just had a long talk with Walter Craig on the phone. Jim. It's the very first opening they've had for a district supervisor in 15 years, and they're offering it to me. Think of it, honey, the first one in 15 years. But we have to move to New York. Well, naturally, it's the second district. Of course, we wouldn't have to live right in New York City. I mean, we could live in Westchester or out in... What's the matter with you? With me, dear? With all of you. Father. You don't seem to understand. This is an opportunity that comes once in a lifetime. But, well, of course, dear, but... Well, it is rather sudden. I don't want to live in New York. Gosh, just when I get to be the manager. <laughs> Why, I thought you'd be the happiest people in the world. New York is... It's a very exciting city. It's got theaters and dozens of department stores and all kinds of things. But we don't know anybody in New York, Father. Well, what's that got to do with it? What good is it living any place if you don't know anybody? <laughs> I don't know. I come home with the greatest news any man ever brought to his family and look at you. All we need is a body and we can have a first-class wake. <laughs> I don't want to go to New York. <laughs> Don't do that, Kathy, please. All right, Angel, that's enough. If I thought everybody was going to be so upset about it... Jim, naturally we're going to do whatever you decide is best, but don't you think we ought to talk the whole thing over first? What is there to talk about? Well, after all, this will affect all of our lives. It will improve all of our lives. Oh, sure. Betty, how many shows a year can you see in Springfield? I don't know. In New York, you can see a different show practically every night. But I don't want to see the shows. I want to be in them. Well, they have little theater groups. You can get into one of them. What's going to happen to my club? What club? The Secret Two. <laughs> Patty Davis and I. That's really something to worry about. <laughs> We've got the most wonderful password. And if we go to New York, who will know it? Dad, I carried water buckets for two whole years. Bud, wouldn't you like to see the Yankees and the Giants and the Dodgers? Oh, I suppose You'll so. You'll be able but... to see every team in both major leagues, maybe even a World Series. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Well, sure, They've but... They've got pro football teams, the best in the world. They've got... Uh, Jim, there's one thing you don't understand. Springfield is our home. I realize that, honey, but it's been my home a lot longer than theirs. I'm 40 years old, and I've never lived anywhere but Springfield. What do you want to change now for? <laughs> because everything in the world changes, kitten. Nothing stays still. That's progress. That's advancement. That's the front door. <laughs> Bud? I'll bet they don't have any friends like Joe Phillips in New York. That's what I'll bet. They come 12 to a block. Janie Liggett. Now, don't you start with Janie Liggett. But she's my dearest friend. How can I live next to anybody but Patty Davis? You spend your whole life getting used to people. Betty, you don't seem to realize that I have friends, too. Well? You don't hear me moaning about Hector Smith and Ed Davis and Jim Hathaway, do you? And they're better friends than you'll ever have. Jim, this whole discussion is very silly. It's no such thing. I mean, we're certainly not going to make up our minds this minute. We don't have to make up our minds. I've already told Craig I'd take the job. Father! Jim, how could you? Well, I had no idea you'd feel this way about it. I thought you'd kick up your heels and jump with joy. <laughs> well, if it isn't a happy little Anderson. Hello, Hector. Come on in. How about me? Ed, what is this, a convention? No, Ed and I just dropped by to... Convention? It's more like a funeral. Hi, Margaret. Hello, Hector. What's everybody laughing about? Ed, it isn't funny. Yeah, so I gather. Daddy got promoted. <laughs> well, why don't we all sit down and have a good cry? <laughs> hey. Hey, wait a minute. What did Kathy say? I've been promoted to district supervisor, but... You have? Jim, it's wonderful. Congratulations, pal. I always said they couldn't keep a good man down. Thank you, Hank. Put it there, boy. Couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. Well, <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. Wait till I tell the fellas at the club. My pal, Jim Anderson, a district supervisor. Your pal? I live next door to him. Now I can have all my district supervised free of charge. <laughs> yeah. I'm busy right now, bud. Oh, it's okay, Jim. We're in no hurry. We want to talk about the setup for the service club dinner, but there's no rush. Well, all right, bud. What is it? 
Is it okay if I go across the street to see Joe Phillips? I suppose so, if your mother doesn't have any objections. Uh, Bud, if you don't mind, I'd like to speak to you and the girls in the kitchen. But I promise you... It'll only take a few minutes, and it's very important. Yes, ma'am. Come along, girls. Mother! Not now, dear. You boys will excuse us, won't you? Oh, sure. Oh, don't pay any attention to us, Margaret. We'll just sit here and look at our old friend, the district supervisor. (laughs) Cut it out, will you, Heck? Cut what out? Hurry up, Kathy, bud. Yes, Mommy. We aren't kidding, Jim. How often do you think we get to look at a district supervisor? Yeah, especially a live one. (laughs) All right, bud, close the door. Now. Mother, do we really have to go? Can't you tell Daddy we don't want to? When I think of all those water buckets I carried... Just a moment, all of you. This is a very serious problem. And how? And we've got to treat it in a very serious manner. We've got to decide once and for all which is more important to us. Our friends are your father's happiness. But, Mommy, I love Patty so. I know, Angel. It isn't going to be easy for any of us. But there's one thing we mustn't forget. I almost did until Mr. Smith and Mr. Davis made me remember. Your father's worked very hard to make a success for himself and for all of us. Now, he has a chance to take a big step forward... And we mustn't stand in his way. But we're all so happy here. (laughs) We'll be happy in New York, too. I'll bet. Bud, even if we aren't, we must never let your father know. Well, I can always write to Joe, I suppose. (laughs) Of course you can. Why did we have to have a father who was so smart? (laughs) (laughs) He's more than that, Angel. He's just as good as a father can be. He'd give up this promotion in in two minutes if he thought it was going to make us unhappy. Fathers are like that. What a life. So we've got to play our part. We've got to convince him that we want to go to New York. He's devoted his life to helping us. Now we're going to help him. Aren't we, Betty? Yes, Mother. Bud? Sure. Kathy? Mommy, you know what? What, dear? I hope I never get to be a father. (laughs) It sort of looks as though father should have consulted with the family before he decided to take that New York job. But on many other occasions, ladies, the head of the house needs no help from anyone in making the final decision. For example, when it comes to judging truly fine coffee, the final say-so belongs to your husband, the world's greatest coffee expert. It's true that we're known as experts, too. More families do buy our Maxwell House coffee than any other brand. But when you brew the coffee for your family's enjoyment, why, your husband is the only expert who matters. And tomorrow, if you'll fill his cup with wonderfully good Maxwell House coffee... He's sure to smile and say, Now that's really fine coffee. We're certain he'll say that. So certain we'll return your money if he doesn't. You see, we know no other coffee can offer that same famous good-to-the-last-drop flavor. It's a flavor that can come only from certain choice coffees, selected, blended, and roasted according to the one and only Maxwell House recipe. No other coffee is made like Maxwell House. That's why no other coffee tastes like Maxwell House. Tomorrow, then, serve your husband our Maxwell House coffee. If he doesn't say, best coffee ever, just send us the can, an unused portion, and we'll refund your money. Our address is right on every familiar blue tin. Yes, pour the world's most satisfying coffee for the world's greatest coffee expert, your husband. Serve him Maxwell House coffee. Always good to the last drop. Only a few minutes have passed in the white frame house on Maple Street. Just long enough for Jim Anderson to settle miserably on the horns of his dilemma. It's an unhappy seat, and sharing it with him are his two good friends, Hector Smith and Ed Davis. Like this. Boy, it's really a spot to be in, isn't it, Heck? Yeah, you said it. Jim, can't they do anything about it? I mean, can't they transfer somebody or something? I'm afraid not. If I want the job, I've got to go to New York. Thought you said you took it. I did. Well, what's the problem? If you took it, you took it. The problem is that maybe I shouldn't have taken it. I 
Should have talked it over with Margaret first. Look, Jim, if you haven't signed a contract... I gave Craig my word. He's going to call me back and confirm the whole thing any minute. Yeah, but if it isn't definite... It is definite, Hack. He's just got to get an okay from Emerson, the big boss. But it's just a matter of form. They never interfere with Craig. He'll shake his head yes, and I'll be hooked. It's a fine mess, isn't it? Boy, you never know what's going to happen. We stop in to talk about the service club, and Zowie, we're in a crisis. You know, maybe they won't mind going to New York, the kids, I mean. It isn't a bad place once you get used to it. It isn't New York, heck. It's any place. They don't want to leave here. Their home, their friends. No, they'll make new friends. Everybody does, don't they, heck? Sure, they won't have any trouble at all. First thing you know, they'll forget they ever lived in Springfield. I don't believe that. And neither do you. No, but it sounded good. <laughs> Jim, what would happen if you told Craig you changed your mind? Nothing, I suppose. Except that I'd get fired. Oh, he wouldn't do that, would he? Why not? What would you do if you went to your boss, made a big pitch for a guy's promotion, and then the guy turned you down? I'd poke him in the nose. I'd settle for a poke in the nose. You know, I better go home. I told Ethel I'd only be a few minutes. Wait a second. Ed, heck, what do you think I ought to do? Well, it isn't a fair question, Jim. Why not? Because we don't want you to go. That's why not. And mm, anything we tell you, well... He's right, pal. We're two of the most prejudiced guys you ever saw. I don't know. Jim, you and I have been friends for almost 30 years, and I'm giving it to you straight. Don't believe anything I tell you. <laughs> well, that's a great hunk of advice. We're being honest, Jim. We might give you a bum steer. Not that we don't mean well, but... I know that, but look... If I go to New York... It means a lot more money, doesn't it? Eventually, but is it worth it? I mean, is it worth digging my family up by the roots? Tossing them into a whole new way of life? Well, frankly, I don't think so. On the other hand, you know what they say. Whether you're rich or poor, it's always nice to have money. <laughs> He's the practical rover boy. Well, you said yourself you get fired if you turn down a job. That's right, but Cavalier isn't the only insurance company in the world. I can get another job. Now, Jim, don't do anything foolish. Oh, I suppose you want him to go to New York. No, but I don't want him to throw away everything he's worked for. Look, Jim won't have any trouble getting another job, and you know that it. That isn't Heck. the point. Why should he give up a good job for just anything? Maybe Ed? he'd get a better job. How do you know? I still Fellas. say he's got to think of his family. And I say he's got to think of himself. Fellas, please, let's not have any arguments. Well, Jim, you make up your own mind. And, and, and anything you decide, we're all for you. Well, thanks, Eck. I've got to get home. Ethel will have the cops out for me. Well, I'll take you to the door. Oh, don't bother, pal. We know where it is. Well, think it over carefully, Jim, before you do anything. I will, Ed. If you need any help, let us know. Okay, Heck. Fine friend you turned out to be. Well, you don't want him to do anything he shouldn't, do you? Of course not, but I sure hate to see him go. My friend. And big help they turned out to be. Margaret! Just when you get everything nicely organized, a thing like this has to come up. Hello, dear. Have the boys gone? Yes, they uh, had to go home. We've been thinking it over, Father, and we've got wonderful news for you. We sure have. Well, I've been doing a little thinking myself. Daddy, Mommy says they've got an aquarium in New York with all kinds of fish in it. That's right, kitten. But we won't be seeing it for a while. We're going to stay in Springfield. Father! Betty? I mean, Father, we want to go to New York. Really, we do. No, you don't. Sure we do, Dad. Don't we, Kathy? Oh, sure. Look at all the things we can do. Like, look at fish. <laughs> I think we'll all be happier here. Jim, we had a long talk. Honey. We really did, Father. And we never realized what a wonderful place New York is. There's nothing wrong with Springfield, is there? No, but gosh, you can live in Springfield your whole life and never get to see the Yankees. Well, what's so wonderful about seeing the Yankees? I saw them once, and Springfield has a better team. But you said I could get to see a World Series. Well, never mind what I said. Father, will I really be able to see a show every night? Of course not. But you said... You'll still be going to school, and you won't have time to go to shows. I want to go to the aquarium. Oh, stop it, Kathy. Margaret? 
<laughs> All right, dear. That's enough. Yes, Mommy. <laughs> Jim, as long as the children really want to go... And we do, Father. Yes, sir. Just a minute, all of you. I know exactly what you're doing, and it isn't the least bit necessary. You're putting on this big sacrifice act, and I won't have it. But, Jim, if you told Mr. Craig... Ten minutes ago, you were all screaming about your wonderful friends and how you'd die if you had to leave them. But you said we could get new friends. What's the matter with the ones you have? <laughs> Nothing, but... Don't you want to be the manager of the football team? Well, sure, but... Father, you don't seem to realize what a thing like this can do to your psyche. <laughs> My, uh, what? What Betty means, dear, is that you convinced us all that we should go to New York, and now... I'm beginning to feel like a yo-yo. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret. I don't even know what an aquarium looks like. Honey, I'm trying to tell you I was wrong. I made a mistake. Oh, no, Father, you couldn't. We were the ones who were wrong. Look, I'll put it this way. I don't want to go to New York. Why, Jim, after you've worked so hard... I don't want to leave my friends. But you said that wasn't important. You'll make lots of other friends, Daddy. I don't want any other friends. I'm satisfied with Hector Smith and Ed Davis. Huh. They come 12 to a block. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, bud. Father, can you imagine living in a city that has 12 department stores? Betty. The clothes we'll be able to buy. That's another thing. We can't afford to live in New York City. The cost of living is higher. Food is higher. Taxes are higher. The buildings are higher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bud. I want to see the Empire State Building. Jim, we understand. You don't understand. I've lived in Springfield all my life. I've been very happy here, and I don't want to leave. Mother. Uh, just a moment, dear. Jim, you've dreamed for so many years of a chance just like this. You can't throw it away now. Why can't I? It wouldn't be fair to any of us. Honey, you saw what happened tonight. I belong with people like Hector and Ed. We understand one another. We're friends. Twelve to a block. <laughs> what was that? Oh, I, uh, I was just uh, thinking, Dad. Why is it you always remember the wrong things? <laughs> I was just saying what you said. Jim. Can't you understand what I'm trying to tell you? I'm the president of the service club. I'm a member of the Chamber of Commerce. I'm on the Greens Committee of the Country Club. Are those things really important, dear? Of course they are. Not because of any glory or any special prestige. They're important because they mean that I belong, that we all belong, that we're a living, breathing part of our community. And that's very important. It's the most important thing in life. Jim, are you really serious? Of course I'm serious. You mean you don't want to go to New York? That's precisely what I mean. Oh, Father, you're wonderful. Yeah! <laughs> so that was an act you were putting on, wasn't it? Well, sort of. I wasn't putting on any act. I want to see the aquarium. Oh, why don't you keep still? <laughs> Jim, there's one thing that bothers me. What are you going to tell Mr. Craig? Well, we'll take care of that when it comes up. Father, is it really all settled? Are we going to stay here? Yes, Betty, right here where we belong. Isn't it wonderful, Mother? Now I can be Joan of Arc. And I can be the manager. And I can be the president. Jim, I'm still worried about Mr. Craig. There isn't okay. anything to worry about, honey. I'll tell him something. After all, the worst he can do is fire me. That's what I'm afraid of. I can get another job. Sure he can, Mom. Mr. Crandall needs somebody to deliver prescriptions. <laughs> Jim, maybe we're making a mistake. Honey, after we've got it all settled... But if you have to start all over again... Father, it's for you. Well, it's probably Craig. Uh, I'll be right there, Betty. Jim, see if you can't turn the job down diplomatically. I'll do everything I can, believe me. I think it's long distance, Father. Thank you, Betty. Hello? Uh, yes, this is James Anderson. Thank you. Uh, why don't you go back to the kitchen, dear? Okay. Good luck, Father. <laughs> I'll need it. Hello? Oh, hello, Mr. Craig. I was just telling my family about... Well, that's what I want to discuss. You see... Well, we all felt... Oh? But if I... But I tried to... Well, if it's definite... 
Okay, if that's the way it's got to be. Well, that's all right, Mr. Craig. Yeah, I understand. Oh, yes. Well, thank you very much. And good night. The nerve of him. The unmitigated nerve of the man. Jim, what is it? What happened? Margaret, do you know what that man Emerson did? Who? The president of Cavalier. After all Craig said to me, Emerson gave the job to his brother-in-law. <laughs> Ladies, when you buy coffee, you're buying flavor. That means your best coffee value must be the brand with the most in flavor. And there is one coffee famous above all others for flavor, our Maxwell House coffee. So tomorrow, let your husband, the world's greatest coffee expert, enjoy that superb flavor. When he smiles and says, best coffee ever, you'll know that for flavor, Maxwell House is your best coffee buy. And you'll have further proof of value if you just count all the heartwarming cups of fine coffee you get from each pound. Yes, for the most in flavor for every penny you spend for coffee. Take home that familiar blue tin with the big white cup and drop. Make your coffee Maxwell House, the one coffee that's always good to the last drop. <laughs> It's breakfast time in Springfield, and the Andersons, as usual, are packing it away. Crises may come, and crises may go, but breakfast goes on forever, like this. I'm not very hungry this morning, Mom. Maybe I'll only have three eggs. <laughs> All right, dear. Don't you feel well, bud? Oh, it isn't anything. It's just that, well, I was thinking about the Yankees. If we lived in New York... Bud... Janie Liggett says she has thousands of friends in New York, and they all say... I don't care what they say. May I have my coffee, Margaret, please? Of course, dear. There you are. Thank you. Fine friend Patty Davis turned out to be. She's going to be a little vulture again. You haven't touched her cereal, Kathy. I wish we did move to New York. I'd show her and all the other vultures. When I think of all those beautiful department stores and all those wonderful dresses. May I have the cream and sugar, please? What are you kicking about? I could have seen the Yankees and the Giants and the Dodgers. May I please have the cream and sugar? Oh, dear, I mustn't forget to call Elizabeth Smith. <laughs> Folks, Gainsey, the famous talking dog, always says, Gaines meal. What about Gaines meal, Gainsey? <laughs> Nourishes every inch of a dog. It sure does. Kennel and laboratory tests prove Gaines meal supplies balanced nourishment your dog needs for good health. Yet Gaines costs less to feed than any other type of dog food. So, folks, get Gaines meal. <laughs> America's largest selling dog food. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson with Roy Bargey and the Maxwell House Orchestra. In our cast were Ted Donaldson as Bud, June Whitley, Rhoda Williams, Norma Jean Nilsson, Herb Bygren, Barney Phillips, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. So until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's favorite brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Ed James. Now stay tuned in for Dragnet, which follows immediately over most of these stations. Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. Listen on NBC.